and welcome to Who Wins Podcast, where each episode we pit pop culture icons against each other in a brutal fight to the death. I am Chris Bolton. With me, as always, my partner in pugilism, Mr. Mark Williams. Hello. And this episode, we are pitting Mighty Mouse against Batfink. Yeah, now this one, um, it's a bit of a strange one for me because I, in my head, I thought we were doing Danger Mouse. All week I've been thinking Danger Mouse, not Mighty Mouse. It's only the last of 10 minutes I've gone, oh, fuck. Yeah, no, so, it was it was Mighty Mouse. Oh, it, it was, was entirely. It, yeah. it entirely was. I just had I just misread it. I wasn't paying attention. Um, okay, cool. Because you made me doubt myself. Then <laughs> no, no, it's, it's I entirely could do my the other fault. one. No, but, entirely my fault. Um, not not that it's an issue. Um, I remember. Um, I remember Mighty Mouse. I hadn't realised how many of the original ones I'd seen. Um, so the early Terry Tunes ones. Um, mm. so when I was sort of flicking through trying to sort of catch up what it, with what I could. Uh, online before we started i found a lot of those shorts um on there and sort of flicking through those just trying to pick up bits out of them and i'd seen quite a lot of those as well so that was um that was quite fun and i'm now thinking yeah they're only four minutes long they're, they're quite useful if uh if you're, you know, just sort of sitting around doing bugger all for a couple of minutes they're quite you know, they're quite easy to chuck on and they don't really require a lot of attention no i mean uh maybe it's maybe it's one we should put on smpd bat think certainly is um mm. i can't believe we didn't have it on our list uh, yeah. i've not Rewatched anything in preparation for this because um, I I loved both of these cartoons as a kid, but absolutely mm. adored both of them. Um, so there's no need for me to rewatch anything. But mm. um, yeah, in thinking about it this week, because I have been thinking about it as I always do, uh, I have been kind of getting the itch to rewatch some of them. Um, yeah. I did clarify that. I could see you started to smirk <laughs> then before I finished that sentence. So I was like, right, hang on, <laughs> I better clarify here. Um, so yeah, I guess. What we're really talking about here, if we're honest, let's be straight about it. We're really talking about Superman versus Batman, aren't we? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that is it. Although, I mean, Batfink is Batman in in name, I suppose, but he's yeah. kind of more Green Hornady than yeah. he is Batman because karate's like his Kato, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and and we need to lay the groundwork down right here and now. Like we can't allow karate into this. No, as well. no, no, no. Like this is just the two of them, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's the rodents. Yeah, it, it's the rodents fighting each other. So it's it's Superman, Batman, essentially. Yeah. Um, now on the surface of it, obviously, you got to figure Mighty Mouse is is all over this. Like he's practically indestructible. Um, yeah, he's super strong. He, I, I mean, it was one of those things where because it was a kids' cartoon as well, they kind of it almost felt like his powers were whatever they needed to be that week. Like yeah. I can specifically remember Mighty Mouse suddenly doing stuff that he hadn't done before. So yeah, he was just like, oh, we need Mighty Mouse to do this this week, so no problem, just crack yeah. on. Um, whereas Batfink has a very specific power set. Like Batfink has the wings, and yeah. he has the supersonic sonar radar. Yeah, like that's that's it. That's his powers. Whereas Mighty Mouse is super strong, can fly, yeah. like bulletproof, as far as I can tell. Um, so yeah, and I mean, if you if you go back to some of the earlier ones as well, like he has. As you said, he he has powers that just he needed that week, so they had them. So there's one um, where he's rescuing uh, Mary's little lambs from some wolves, and he's flying around, and somebody th- one of the wolves just throws like half a dozen um, meat cleavers at him, and he's flying towards them, and they're hurtling at him, and he just sort of blasts them. From obviously for the way it's animated, it looks like he's blasting some of lightning bolts out of his hands, and whether it's supposed to be lightning bolts or whether it's supposed to be some sort of wind or whatever, it is, but they all just stop turn around in midair and shoot back at the wolves and then you know, pin this one to the wall. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, you're right. It's this thing where it's like, oh yeah, well, he can yeah. do that because he needs to. Why not? It's funny. Yeah, it's, and nobody it's, will it's, care. His power set is is pretty immense, to be fair. Um, it, it's I almost mean, like the Green Lantern approach. It's whatever you can think of, we can do it. Yeah, like what does he need to do this week? Whereas I say, Bat Fink was, was a lot more grounded. Um, mm. I don't remember we're talking about super rodents here, but he, he very clearly had the wings that were like a shield of steel and he had the supersonic sonar radar, which was kind of um, for anybody that I can't imagine you're listening to this if you don't know these characters. Mm. But if you don't, the supersonic sonar radar was bat radar and it was like supposed to work like bat radar and that he would use it to sense things. But it would kind of come out in this like just they would spell out beep. Yeah. And <laughs> but then this beep would be kind of almost alive like this was this was these were sentient letters Hmm. and they could kind of morph themselves into sort of all kind of weird shapes so he could use them to like wrap people up he would like hit people over the head Hmm. with them um so it was way cooler than just like a radar it was like this was a weapon 
these these beeps would come out and just like you could wallop people with them and all sorts. But you've got um, to wonder, right? Looking at things like that, and lots of cartoons did that type of thing. You've got to wonder how many kids growing up not understanding what fucking radar was. Because I have no of that. fucking clue. I was like, the same. I was like, oh, it's radar. You can you know you can fucking hit people with it. Yeah, I I had no fucking clue what, what I didn't know what a radar was. Mm. It was just. I knew it was something to do with bats flying and, air, and airplanes used it, and that was kind of it. I didn't understand what it was. And then, so when you see it being used on TV, because you have no frame of reference when you're a child, ca- a cartoon is a cartoon, and it doesn't matter that it's animated as opposed to being live action because it's on TV. It must be real. Yeah, I mean, I, I had no fucking... I, I, maybe I was a thick kid. I don't know, but I didn't know what a radar was. I just thought... I, I literally, probably till I was about eight or nine, thought radar was the word beep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I might, as, I might as well have thought Roadrunner had fucking radar because this to me was what radar was. It was what mm. Batfink had. He had supersonic sonar radar, and that was beep. That was that was it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, so so his his power set is, is very specific. Now, I don't see the beep doing much to Mighty Mouse. If I'm honest, it's not going to tie no. him up because he's going to be able to like snap out of he's it. Power out, won't he? Yeah, it's not going to be able to hit him because he's too powerful. So about all the beeps going to be good for, I think, is kind of working out where Mighty Mouse is because he, again, is, is the Superman thing of it. Like, he moves super fast and stuff yeah. when he needs to. So the radar is going to help Batfink position himself, I think, for that. Yeah. Um, the real question is whether the the wings are going to stand up to to a punch. Yeah. That's, that's what this comes down to, isn't it? Because, you know, they're like a shield of steel and they're bulletproof. But, but are they are they Superman proof? Are they Superman proof? That's the thing. I mean, the um, thing is, well, I mean, I I remember the wings even not being consistent because sometimes it was no, sometimes it was made out that they were stainless, like no, they were stainless steel. Other times he had to use like spot cleaner to clean bits of rust off them. So I, it's like, I, I I don't I don't even know I, I don't I doubt I doubt very much I've made that up. I'm not for, I'm I'm too fucking tired to have made that up. Um, I I don't so, know. I mean, I never really. I never really thought of them actually as steel is the thing. You're right. I can remember him polishing the wings. Now you say it, but they, they were always like a shield of steel. They weren't. But then it would make sense that that, that they were actual steel yeah. because he used to fucking like hit people with them as well. Yeah, there, there was one episode he used like he used them like a sword as well. Um, so so I'm, I'm fairly sure they referred to. I'll have to look it up. I'm fairly sure mm-hmm. he refers to them as being stainless steel at one point. I don't know. I just I, I, I always remember it being my wings well, are like, yeah, a, like shield a shield of steel. steel yeah. Yeah, um, so I'm not sure. But if they are steel, then does that technically make him a cyborg? Is he a cyborg bat? I don't know. Well, the cyborg would be, they'd have to be robotic, wouldn't they? Well, yeah, but they, like, if they're made of steel, they're not part of him, are they? But they're just, that would just be like an implant. or like, no, To be a cyborg, they'd have to be sort of self, or able to be controlled and sort of robotic. Yeah, but but that's what I'm saying. It, like they move, and they're not part of him. But do they, do they move, or does he move them? Well, he wraps them around himself, I guess. Doesn't so he? he? But they so are he his... moves. So he moves them rather than them moving. Yeah, I don't know. It's more. It's, it's more like having a prosthet- uh, prosthetic rather than being cybernetic, isn't that? Yeah, I guess. Maybe he had his wings amputated or something. I don't know. We don't. I don't really understand the, yeah, bat, I, I, the backstory I of Batfink. I, I don't know the origin story. I don't know where he, be, you know, how he became Batfink. Maybe there's a movie in that somewhere. I mean, there should certainly be a Batfink reboot. Whether yeah. that's a movie or not, I don't know. But I will take all the Batfink you can give to me. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really see that they're going to stand up to a Mighty Mouse punch because <laughs> Mighty Mouse can. Yeah, I mean, he's he's fucking Superman, right? But. He is much smaller than Batfink because a mouse is smaller than a bat, right? Yeah, generally. I mean, yeah, but I mean, bats are not big by any stretch. Well, some are. Depends on the, depends on the type of bat, doesn't it? Depends it's on the it's type not really of bat, specific yeah. what type of bat he is. Because like fruit bats are quite fucking big, aren't they? You know, they, they? They become very broad and stuff. Yeah, Whereas, like, your, bats are quite big as well. Yeah, aren't they? like your, so. your average woodland bat is about the size of a mouse, but with wings. Yeah. So I guess if you look at Batfink in relation to karate. Um, mm. like he's not like obviously he's smaller than karate, he's, but he's not. He's like tiny. Size, isn't he? Yeah, so he's got to be like a kind of one of those giant fruit bat sized bats, really, isn't yeah. he? So mm. he is quite large. Yeah. So I'm fairly he's... sure bats do hunt for mice, don't they? Like mice are their prey, or part of their prey. I don't know. I have no idea. 
Um, I'll take I'll take that though. I, I, <laughs> again, I I think I'm too tired to have made that up, but yeah, that no, that seems plausible. Yeah, that does seem plausible. And as I say, they are the larger rodent. Nevertheless, Mighty Mouse is a super fucking mouse. Now he does have weaknesses though, doesn't he? I do remember yeah. there's there's um. Gorgonzola. There is a type of cheese that you yeah. can't have. I don't. I don't think it is Gorgonzola. I what can't remember which one it is. It'll come to me. But there is a, there is a specific type of cheese that yeah. he, that he can't have. It's like his kryptonite. Yeah. Um, Google is your friend, kids. I'm gonna not going to Google it right now. There is definitely. I haven't made this up. I know I haven't. Because <laughs> when I was thinking about this this week, I was like, he must have some sort of weakness, and I did rack my brain. And there is definitely there is a specific type of cheese, and it's one of the like really random cheeses. It's not like yeah. cheddar, but there is a specific <laughs> type of cheese. Yeah. He can't have. He's got like an, an allergy to it, essentially. Um, and he, I feeling he's also like sensitive to, I think there's sounds and stuff that would fuck him up as well. But it was definitely like a hundred percent. There was a cheese. Yeah, I, I can't remember. I'm looking for it now. I can't see it. So what what we're looking for with with Batfink really is the is the kind of classic, the classic Batman play of like instead of a kryptonite bullet, he needs this fucking cheese bullet. It's gonna bug me now. So if you can't find <laughs> it, I'm gonna have to find it. There is definitely a type of cheese. Yeah, um, I've just got to work out what I need to Google in order to find out what type of cheese that is. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing we have forgotten about, uh, we haven't mentioned thus far, is that... Limburger. I found it straight away. Limburger right, cheese. Yeah. Incidentally, what the fuck is Limburger cheese? I'm okay, guessing cause... it's a form of cheese. Well, of course it's a form of... <laughs> what... what kind of what cheese fucking, is what, it? What... I don't fucking is know. Is it blue cheese? Is it, like... I... Let me see. Limburger I cheese. I don't fucking know. It's cheese. It's, right. It's like a Swiss cheese. It's like a cheese with all, like, holes in it. Um, it's well, a good. cheese that originated in the Hervey era, the historical duchy of Limburg, which has its capital in Limbourg, now in the French-speaking Belgian province of Liege. Right. So it's a the more, the more you know. It's Belgian cheese. So there you go. Uh, so that's his weakness. So if Batfink can get his hands on some of this cheese, I guess. Well, the thing is, I mean, from from Bat there from Batfink's point of view, there was always some Deus Ex Machina um, at the end of every episode. Yes. So surely here it involves this cheese. Well, you'd think so. I mean, again, it's in the character there. Where I said he's more like Green Hornet, mm -hmm. um, but there is still that kind of almost detective-like element to Batfink. There's yeah. that kind of out. Maybe he's not the strongest of the two characters, but there's that yeah. element of outfoxing your opponent. Whereas yeah. Mighty Mouse is very much a blunt object. Yeah, just like charge straight towards him, hit him as hard as I can, and probably like knock him into next week. Like, yeah. probably, he'd probably take those wings off, wouldn't he? Like, if he punched, oh him, yeah, completely. He like the wings would just rip straight out of his body. Um, so uh, yeah, I I think there's that element of outfoxing of Batfink being ready for him, and having the Limburger cheese to hand. Yeah. Um. Now, now how how does it manifest itself as a weakness? Or so because I I couldn't I. I was looking through through the page and I couldn't see it. So is it, it like kryptonite? You just can't be near it. It's his kryptonite. Yeah, that's right, exactly okay. what it is. It's it's his kryptonite. Um, so obviously being a children's cartoon, it doesn't particularly get graphic with it. But, you know, it, yeah, you can't be near it. It'll weaken him. I assume if you shot him with a Lindenberg cheese bullet, it would kill him. Um, I assume if you force fed it to him, it would kill him. Um, yeah. You know, I, I assume a, a Lindenberg mouse trap might kill him. You know, what, you, you've got to get creative with this, but essentially, yeah. I think yes. we allow the the Lindenberg cheese to kill him. Whereas Batfink is killable by anything. Yeah, it's just that most things can't kill him because his wings are like a shield of steel. Yeah, I don't see that they like. I really don't see that they can help him though. I really don't see that they're going to hold up to a no. a punch and, from Mighty and, Mouse. No, and the thing is that. You... We just mentioned the um the, the cheese being a kryptonite. Even if he coated himself in cheese, the speed that he approaches at, he's going to get a punch in, which is going to be powerful enough to to damage him. Even well, before he feels the effect of the cheese. Well, if he if he like if he basically makes himself essentially a giant mozzarella stick is what we're saying then with a the Lindenberg, just dip himself yeah. in melty cheese like a cheese yeah. covered bat, right? Um, hmm. what what could go wrong with that? Yeah, like Mighty Mouse is going to be traveling super fast to get towards him. Yeah. 
but surely once he's in the vicinity of that cheese, like his power is going to ebb away. So A, he's going to lose velocity, which means he's going to lose force, mm. which means that punch isn't going to be as effective. Plus, but, you now have the effect of him having to punch through the liquid cheese layer yeah. to get to the steel. So by the time he hits the steel wings, that punch is just isn't going to have the same power behind it, is it? It may not have the same power behind it, but if you think about it, I mean... It depends. Again, it depends on what the cheese are. Does he need to? Does he need to be breathing in the cheese, or is it sheer proximity? I mean, I I didn't get into the finer <laughs> points of how does Lindenberg cheese affect my. But I would assume so. Like with with kryptonite, it doesn't really matter how hmm. how a Kryptonian ingests kryptonite. It's just that if they ingest that kryptonite, kryptonite, that's something entirely different again. <laughs> kryptonite, um, then then it weakens them. So I assume it's the same thing with the cheese, like doesn't matter if he eats the cheese smells the cheese ingests the cheese snorts the cheese like it doesn't matter drinks the cheese whatever like he just he can't be near the cheese yeah and i'm just thinking you know if he's approaching at uh, if he's approaching at speed even if it does weaken him he's still got momentum that's going to carry him forward so there's still going to be a fair bit of weight behind him hitting him even if it's not as much as it yeah, would there is be. but you're losing the super strength of it aren't you you've got the super speed Hmm. Right, so you've got the velocity from the speed. Yeah. What you haven't got is the is the muscle mass and the strength. But, but there's the there's two parts to it, aren't there? So there's the the punch is secondary. So e like even if you, you know if you have something that's moving at high speed, even if it doesn't have a secondary motion like a punch coming out of it, just the momentum of something hitting you at speed is going to do some damage. But then, like yeah, but then if we're talking actual physics as opposed to cartoon made up physics, hmm. um then that makes him no different to a bullet, does it? Mm. So then he wouldn't be able to penetrate the shield of steel because he hasn't got the additional mass of the of the super strength punch mm. to put behind it, is he? It's a bit like, if, if you imagine, um, like, it's the difference between He-Man punching Skeletor, yeah? Mm. And He-Man just running into Skeletor and just piling on him like this both both are effective but one is way more effective oh, yeah. than the other because one's yeah, no, got not, not, yeah, not the muscle that. mass and the strength behind it whereas the other is just a big sweaty oily man jumping on you uh, and it, same thing but with a mouse here i mean hmm. he is you know he is quite a large mouse he's barrel chested he's, he's pretty he's still got a lot of mass behind him and you know hmm. velocity and mass together is going to equal force yeah. so it's still going to be a lot of force yeah, but then so is a fucking bullet. Hmm. So all he is at this point is a giant bullet, isn't it? Hmm. So at which point I don't think he can break through the shield of steel. Maybe we'll strap some wings to a to a bat and find out uh, uh, and to a, a bat so, and, so and if, throw and throw a mouse at it. So if that happens, what he's actually got to do is summon up enough like mouse power to get rid of the cheese. So. Hmm. Okay, then. So this is crucial, really. Are we saying that, that Batfink has deployed the cheese by essentially heating it up nacho style or fondue style and dipping himself in cheese? Yeah, go for a swim. That's right. First of all, that's going to fucking burn. So he's taking one for the team to start with. Like, he's not walking away from this without a scar, even if he wins, because like molten cheese, that's going to mm. fucking burn, right? So... He but maybe, just, maybe he just dips the wings in. He just yes, dips in the that wings would in. work. That would work. And yeah, you probably wouldn't feel that because they're steel, aren't they? Yeah. So that would work. Okay, but that still leaves parts of him vulnerable. But as long as he's wrapped the, the wings around himself, yeah, then he's okay. Okay, yeah, so that works, right? So now Mighty Mouse can no longer penetrate the the wings. Now, I think can also use those wings as a weapon then because they are razor sharp. They are, and if they're coated in cheese, it takes away his inv invulnerability. Yeah, it does. So he's actually going to be able to pierce his skin. Yeah. Yeah, so he could start, like, I mean, they're quite cumbersome. Yeah. But he could actually start attacking Mighty Mouse. He could, and but I mean, that's a, there, there was a, a late episode where he did use them as a sword. Mm. But he, no, he yeah, I've definitely to... seen him like, so, use I mean, the wings and... as a weapon. And because of the state that Mighty Mouse would be in, where he's going to be weakened, he's going to be slower, it wouldn't matter so much that the wings are cumbersome, because as long as they're still coated in cheese, 
or have trees remnant on them or anything else, they're going to it's going to be enough for Baffling to be able to use them as a weapon. Yes, it definitely is. So he's he's got a good chance of getting some blows in on Mighty Mouse here, and he's still got the size advantage as well. So he's punching down as well. So he's definitely got advantage. It's where the Mighty Mouse can now muster up enough power in his weakened state to to do any like he's got to get away basically, yeah. hasn't he? Like yeah, he's he can't. Escape. Like he can, he's got his super breath thing, mm. but he's not going to have access to that in the vicinity of the cheese. Jeez. Yeah. So he's going to have to work out a way to escape. So that's going to rely on him. I mean, he can't get away super fast because the cheese. Yeah, he can't use the the, the strength to push Batfink away. Because the cheese. Because of the cheese. And he's not going to be able to protect himself from any sort of blows or any injuries because of the cheese. Because of the cheese. So what he's actually got to do is just run away as fast as he can. Yeah. Now, this is where the species element of it comes into play then. If, if bats are natural predators to mice, then he's got no chance there either, has he? But at that point, if Bat Fink is going to fly and this cheese is essentially liquid, hmm. then surely it's going to start flying off his wings, isn't it? Yeah. So he is eventually going to start shredding cheese as he's flying after Mighty Mouse. So he's going to be very quick. Just get yeah. in and... I'm going to have to eat him alive. Yeah. Um, just That's to confirm... Gruesome. Some bats do eat mice, rats, and amphibians. Okay, right. Okay, so well, I'll I'll go with that. We did say he was a fruit bat, though, didn't we? I'm assuming fruit bats eat fruit. I know I don't, I don't all so. about bats. It is occurring me to that is occurring <laughs> to me tonight that I know absolutely nothing about bats. I also know fuck all about mice, as it turns out. But yeah, you know. um, I know they're small, and, and they die if you chase them off balconies. I know that much from experience. Yeah, and that's about all I know about mice, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't, they like cheese. Apparently do, they don't. I was going to say, do they actually like cheese? No, or has culture just taught us that Mike's like Mike's? Mike's I cannot okay, now, you are having a good speak one tonight. tonight. <laughs> I really can't speak tonight. Yeah, so has when culture I, just when taught I, us um, that Mike's like cheese. That's the thing. I, then there may be some mice that do, but I know when um, when I lived in Australia with the the um, apartment I lived in before uh, before I actually found a place where I, um, we had quite quite a bad uh, mouse problem there, and we bought a couple of um, humane traps myself and my um, and my flatmate, and it was all, in all the literary had it was don't put cheese in it they'll fucking won't go near it rats will go it rats will go it because rats eat any fucking thing if you put cheese in a mouse trap they won't go for it so it was like it, the uh, it came with like chocolate pellets right because they go for that they, they oh and like no there's like paste and stuff and they, they go for that rather than cheese so i don't know where that's come from i don't know why that's have come about in culture but no the the obvious thing is no you give no, you, you give a mouse cheese. You give a rabbit carrots. No, you you there there are things that be just ingrained in us, which fuck knows where they came from. My takeaway from this is the clangers lied to me. Yeah, that's my that's takeaway from this. Yeah, well, maybe they didn't because they just live on the moon made of cheese. But anyway, maybe um, also also I, rescue rangers lied to us because Monterey Jack, right? Yeah, fuck. My childhood ruined. But why then do you put cheese in mouse trap? Well, you don't, as you say. But like when you see a, a drawing of a mouse trap, I bet you that's where it fucking started. I bet you somebody drew a mouse trap and just decided that they were going to draw a cube of cheese in it because it was easy. Mm. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this whole thing springs up that like mice like cheese. That that's. I bet you it's that simple. Yeah. It's fucking weird that. It it, it bugs me now. Um, I, I, this is something I need to find out later on. This is a rabbit hole I'm going down, listeners. Um, okay, so bat thing swooping overhead, but cheese is now dripping off his wings. So can bat thing fly faster than Mighty Mouse can run at this point? Because also, if he's going to take off to fly, the distance between cheese and Mighty Mouse is going to lessen. Yeah, it's going to dissipate, isn't that? The effect's going to dissipate. Yeah, maybe not fully. But maybe he's allowed to go a bit faster. So, Bat has got to end this quickly. He's got to swoop in very quickly and catch him. But then, uh, again, it's it's the question of how much cheese do you need? Does it no? Does it would he would he need a coating of it, or would just the fact that there's there's going to be residue on it is that going to be enough? I mean, it's not necessarily going to be as as dangerous to him, but any. 
any cheese being pre- present is going to have an, an effect. Yeah, we have to assume it's it's like kryptonite. Like the more there is, the yeah. quicker that effect is going to happen, and yeah. the greater the distance that effect is going to work at. But again, there are so many there are so many unknowns here. It's like what's the delivery method as well? Because yeah. it's intravenous, that's going to go a lot quicker as well. There's all sorts of things, right? So we've got to use a little bit of fucked up science, really. We've got to make this up a little bit as we go. <laughs> well, um, to be fair, no, they are cartoon uh, rodents, so we kind of have yeah, to be and, right. we, and we've already established that they clearly could never exist in the real world because mm. mice actually don't like cheese. So, well, actually, no, that means Mighty Mouse is a factually correct mouse, isn't he? Like, he's 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 true to form. He doesn't like this cheese. Mm. So, actually, no, it's not lying to us. Other um, things lied. Yeah, other things have lied, but Mighty Mouse is on the level. Because, yeah. of course, he is, because he's fucking Mighty Mouse. However, right? Mighty Mouse's voice does not belong to Mighty Mouse. No, I agree. It's yeah. the most ridiculous fucking thing I've ever heard. It's like listening to Roy Keane talk. Yeah, but that's what a mouse is supposed to sound like, I suppose, in 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 their head. You know, that's that's what a super mouse should sound like, I guess, to whoever made it. It, it just doesn't fucking fly. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. Well, no, he sound doesn't right. fly. He's a fucking mouse. Bat thing flies. Um. So I think the way this goes now is I think Bat think swoops in. I think Mighty Mouse has got enough about him now to be able to turn around and hit him with a fucking super gust and just, like, hit him with a gust. Hmm. That thing's got his wings out, so he's going to be a fucking kite. Basically. Yeah, he's, good. he's just going to sail away, isn't he? He's going to sail away. So Mighty Mouse can buy himself some time to recuperate. Yeah. And by the time that thing comes back, that cheese is gone. Hmm. So but- I don't... Th- I don't think he can kill. I don't think he can kill Mighty Mouse quick enough for the cheese to be no. super effective. The only way you would do that is as soon as Mighty Mouse tries to land that punch, is to decapitate him instantly with his cheesy wings. If there's enough cheese left on the wings. However, if we look at the Batman of it all, there's no way he's not packing cheese somewhere else. Uh, I, I'm leaving that alone. Um, <laughs> See, that's my thinking in it. Like, I, I know we, we say, they're not Superman and Batman, obviously, yeah. but they are there are direct. That's that's where your des- that's where the designs are. That's where the characters have come from. Direct comparisons to be drawn. Okay, and, and Batfink does have that about his character. He is he is smarter. He is more of a detective type. He would definitely be outfoxing him. And yeah, you'd like to think he probably isn't just going into battle with wings dipped in cheese. Yeah, um, he's he's gonna have like a fucking baby bell shoved up his ass or something. I mean, this this is why I said, is it cheese bullets? As ridiculous as that sounds, it's like you, you've got range then, haven't you? But yeah, I guess he literally could just pelt Mighty Mouse with cheese, couldn't he? As long as it's the right type of cheese. Yeah, I mean, you could almost see him. And like, like, even, even if he misses, but, you know, it's still in the vicinity, it's still going to have an effect. Yeah, you could almost see him like making little clockwork versions of like, you know, when you were in the kids' parties when you were younger and you had the cheese and pineapple hedgehogs? Yeah. Just make just make like a clockwork one of those and just set it along on the floor. Just <laughs> you could just see Mighty Mouse running away from this little robotic fucking tin foil wrapped hedgehog with cheese and pineapple sticking out of the back of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably not a thing for our international listeners. Like if you're anywhere no. other than the UK. No. Let me know if you know what the fuck I'm talking about. And let's be fair, that's very much a no that died with our generation, didn't it? You don't see it now. You don't, do you? Kids today just don't know. Like what? They just don't know they're born, do they? No. Like kids' parties when we were younger was cheese and pineapple hedgehogs, party rings, fucking yeah. loads of like fucking drinks jet. just full of e numbers. Yeah, jelly and blancmange. Jelly and blancmange. Yeah. I've been, I've been a blancmange for years. Either I can tell actually. you what the fuck is in blancmange actually. I don't think you want to know. I'm pretty sure it's gelatin. Probably. I'm I'm pretty sure you're just eating like pink coloured cow brains. Um, but it tastes good. Blancmange is fucking lovely. Yeah, I love blancmange. That is something nobody over the age of 10 eats, though, isn't it? Like, <laughs> you're right. I, mean, I, 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 I'm, had I will wager years. my kids have never even heard of or seen Blumange. You need to rectify that. because I don't Angel, even know where you fucking get it from. No. You can still get Angel Delight, but that's not yeah, the that's, same that's thing. Yeah, that's not the same, though. That's, it hasn't got the right consistency, is it? No, no. I was going to say, that's not that's not it. As it's, usual. It's probably the closest, but... It's probably the closest yeah. thing I've seen in years, but yeah, it's not the fucking same. More, it's more of a moose than a blancmange angel yeah. delight, isn't it? It's more of like mm-hmm. a, a whippy kind of thing. Yeah. I really want blancmange now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to the Tesco's <laughs> as we finish. 
Yeah, and, and I want it in a fucking mould, like a mould yeah. of like Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or like yeah. a car or I don't care what. And it's got to be pink blancmange as well. They do other colours? Yeah. You can get chocolate blancmange, you can get yellow blancmange. Oh, fuck, get yellow blancmange is custard. No, 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 no. I can see why you would think that, but it's no, not. Just, you can get it's, all it's not fucking right. flavours of blancmange. It's, it's just not fucking right. If it's not pink, it's not right. You can get all flavours of blancmange, but yeah, it's got to be pink. It's got to be the strawberry blancmange. Um, this is way, way, way <laughs> off topic. Sorry, listeners. Again, <laughs> do you have blancmange where you are? Let us know. But more importantly, I want, I really want to know about the more cheese More importantly, if you have some where you are and you're close to us, send us some. Yeah, send blancmange. <laughs> Never mind send nudes. Send blancmange. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, we have an internet full of nudes. We don't have yeah, an internet. We don't full have of an internet full of blancmange. No, we don't. Um, and that would be weird if we did. I really fucking want blancmange now. <laughs> How many times have we said? It's now become that thing where you know, like, if you say a word too much, it yeah. starts to sound wrong. Yeah. And I'm now saying blancmange, and it sounds wrong. <laughs> it sounds like a wrong word, particularly because I can see it like the actual word in my head and it's not spelled like you think no. it is either because there's a fucking c in there because yes. it's blank monge yeah okay wrong yeah we need to wrap this up now so i can go on a hunt for blum <laughs> how did we get there kids parties cheese and pineapple kids, hedgehogs. Kids hedgehogs yeah that's it you so can it almost relatively on point kind of you, yeah. you can almost see it as a, as a sort of yeah like almost a bat gadget that he can have that he could just wind up set this fucking cheese and pineapple hedgehog chasing yeah mighty mouse around and that gives him time to like work out his next move. Um, yeah, I, see, on the surface of it, Mighty Mouse is so powerful that yeah, there's no way Batfink goes into this without calculating all of those eventualities. He's got yeah. Otherwise, there's the, he just gets squished immediately, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, but you know? that's not. No, I mean, even though, even though with, with Batfink, there wasn't a no. You didn't get the evidence that you get with with a Batman, where you do have all the, all the detecting and all the gadgets and all that. You you get the sense that's how that's how Batman works. The fact you do always have the the Deus Ex Machina at the end of it, because there's no, there's always something they just conveniently put in place. Yeah, and you don't you don't get the impression he would leave anything up to chance. Weaken him. Use the cheese. You weaken him. Then while he's trying to run away, run him over in the fucking car. Never mind fucking bat, fanning but, around flying. Just yeah, what bat, was the car the called? Do, I can't remember. Bat thing doesn't drive the car. And we said we can't have Grady in it. Oh shit! Yeah, God, oh, doesn't he? Yeah. What Fuck. was the fucking car called? It wasn't the Batmobile because that's too obvious. But it had a name. The car had a name. Yeah. Um, um, yeah I don't that's know. annoying me now as well. Anyway, yeah. Okay, you're right. We can't allow the car then because he doesn't know. We can allow the supersonic sonar radar though, which yes. would now be. If Mighty Mouse was weakened, that would work again. Like the super. Oh my God! Why did oh, we? It think... was a battle act. Battle act. That's it. Why did we think of this earlier? If the, if there's this fat of cheese that he's dipped his wing in, he can just, you know, fart Pour out a beep. Him. No, fart out a beep. Dip that in the fucking yeah cheese yeah. as well. And then then you have got your cheese dipped bullets because the beeps can just go yeah. and wrap him up or whatever. Restrain him. Essentially, you've got like kryptonite restraints. Then yeah. Cheese and eight restraints. Can, that thing can goes you up and drown and... him in the vat. Oh, that's better. I was going to say you could just go up and cut his head off with the wings, but that's it's like, more, it's like more humane as well, isn't it? I mean, it, the beep could literally pick him up and just drop him in drop the vat. Drop him in. Cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Joker is ass. Um, would would that melt him? No, I don't think so. I think it would melt him. It would just weaken him to the point where he can't escape from the vat. Well, he would just drown, wouldn't he? As long as, as, long, by as long, cheese. As long as you kept it hot enough to keep it liquid. Is that better or worse than drowning in water? I think it might be better because at least it's tasty. I'd rather drown in water. Neither would I. But if you drown in water, like water's fucking boring, isn't it? It doesn't taste yeah. like anything. And if it's seawater, it's salty and horrible and burns your nose. So your last dying thoughts are going to be like, my nose is burning. That's the last thing you're going to remember is your nose yeah. is burning and your eyes are burning. Every, everybody has their life flashes before your eyes. No, nope, my nose is burning. Yeah, that's. Do you not think about that when you get seawater up your nose? That's all I can think about is my nose is fucking burning. I don't go in the fucking sea. I fucking mean, I'm a diver, but... <laughs> Greenpeace will throw me back out. Not the water goes up my nose when I dive, because obviously it wouldn't. I'm wearing a fucking mask and a snorkel. But anyway, 
and a regulator if I'm properly diving. But anyway, if I'm just in the sea, then salt water goes up your nose and it fucking burns. It's horrible, right? If yeah. you're in a vat of cheese, I guess it's still salty, isn't it? <laughs> it depends on the cheese. I didn't think that through, did I? <laughs> but what I'm saying is at least it tastes better because cheese tastes good, right? Yeah. So I think I'd rather drown in cheese than drown in water. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I think we're giving fair. him quite a humane death. I, th- I think so. As opposed to decapitation by you know, cheesy wing. Yeah. I mean, have we reached for that, though? Or is it a case of Mighty Mouse would literally squish bat thing in sex? I don't think it is, because I think bat thing is smart enough to know the cheese thing. Yes. And I think Mighty Mouse is dumb enough to not be able to kill Oh, yeah, com- completely. He No, he's... Every, every iteration of Mighty Mouse, every, everything you see, he's a, he is Superman. He's a blunt object. Yes, it's smash it as hard as I can, as fast as I can, and move on to the next thing that I can smash as hard and fast as I can. Them as a bag of rocks. Yeah, every iteration you see of Batman fighting Superman, and and and, as I know these are different, but they're kind of not. Batman never goes into thinking, I'm going to go toe to toe, I'm going to punch him, I'm going to kick him, I'm going to beat him up. There always has to be a strategy because he knows actually if he does try and punch him, he's just going to break his fingers. Yeah. So yeah, well, there's, no, there, that's not going to be his way. He's not going to go and try and go toe to toe with him. No, I mean Batman wins any fight before the fight starts. That's the whole point that's, of the character, the isn't it? Yeah. Um, and and I, again, I think it's it's not necessarily that with Bat thing, but I certainly think he's smart enough. Yeah. To be able to have yeah outfoxed him to that level and yeah dump him in the vat of cheese. Why mm. not let him drown in the vat of cheese? You'd have to throw the cheese away then though because it's contaminated because there's a mouse in it, but. It's a waste of cheese, is what I'm saying. Well, it depends what type of bat he is. If he if he you know, if he eats mice anyway, it's just no fondue. I guess so. Yeah, it's a big mousy nacho, isn't it? At that point. Yes. Um, the bats eat cheese, though. I don't see. This is the thing. I don't think bats eat cheese. Maybe fruit bats do. I don't know. Hang on. Google's your friend. You're learning a lot tonight, listeners. I. I feel like this has been one of our most educational episodes, probably the most educational episode since I taught you about duck penises. No, bats don't eat cheese, unfortunately. Yep. So it's contaminated now, isn't it? Yeah. There's cheese on his mouse. <laughs> Shame. Um, yeah. I think that does it then. I think the, the vat of cheese is... is it's unavoidable. Like, there's yeah. no way Mighty Mouse can get around being dropped in a vat of cheese by a no because it, it it would be it would weaken him to a point where he couldn't climb out of it yeah and he would just drown and in he, the cheese yeah. exactly death by cheese yeah Job what done. a way to go what a, what way, a way to, to go, go. it's um, fucking death by water I'm, uh, or decapitation fucking... by cheesy wing yeah decapitation by cheesy wing doesn't sound like much fun either oh, oh be god quicker, his though, corpse is gonna smell horrible gonna smell corpses like always do anyway oh yeah but it'll smell just double quicker. horrible yeah this one just it'll, it'll just smell quicker as long as you leave it out in the sun you'll be fine if you leave them out in the sun the cheese will bake won't it then you <laughs> you'll be like fucking grilled cheese oh fucking hell <laughs> these things are important <laughs> they are um, yeah, so I, I think you're right. I think that's probably going to do it. I think that uh, in the Battle of Mighty Mouse and Batfink, Batfink's going to drone him in cheese. I think so. Um, if people have thoughts on that, what the fuck is wrong with you for having thoughts on that? Because <laughs> um, Yeah, as you can we, tell, we, we know didn't think too much about this coming in. <laughs> yeah. no, we, we know we're fucking nuts anyway. But uh, yeah, if you have thoughts on that, shame on you. Um, but yeah, let us know what they are, um, because I think we may have lost the fucking plot at some point this evening. We, we definitely have. Mark had to rush in to do this, and I'm absolutely fucking knackered this evening, and I'm possibly ill. So, yeah, we are we are a little bit spaced this evening. But more importantly than your thoughts on Batfink and Mighty Mouse, genuinely, please do let us know your hot take on Blamange, and do let us know <laughs> do let us know if you had a cheese and pineapple hedgehog as a kid. If you even know what I'm talking about. Oh, that, and when you had Harvest Festival, and you had the bread that was shaped Oh, yeah. Like, like all different things like you had a, sometimes it was a fucking turkey sometimes again it was a hedgehog and they, they'd like cut it up in school and everybody would get like the tiniest little piece of bread with butter yeah. on it but it was the best day ever because i was a fat child and it was free food <laughs> it was amazing i used to love harvest day unless you were the unlucky cunt that got the raisin that was the eyes 
because that was rubbish. Nobody wants bread with raisins in it. That's just wrong. Anyway, anyway. way off topic now. We should probably wrap <laughs> this up before I start talking more about, like, I could I could go all night on children's food. You just make me got fucking the, hungry. I haven't even got the Monster Munch and Ice Gems yet. No, like, I, had, which, I had Monster Munch earlier. I have Monster Munch every day. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I, care if they're for kids. Fuck off. Kids don't appreciate shit like that. No, absolutely not. Mine don't anyway. No. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if, if you do have thoughts on the insanity that has been the last 40 minutes, get in touch. Let us know on Twitter at ddpodcastnet. You can go to our website, ddpodcast.net, where you can also get our previous episodes and other shows as well. On Facebook and YouTube with the Double Down Podcast Network, like, share, subscribe, and uh, follow us there. Where we get your podcast from, like, share, subscribe, and leave some message. We can back to you as best we can. Until next time. See you later.